Let me ask you another question. Let me ask you another question. Have you ever wondered what matters to God? See, what a perfect illustration, and now I'm going to teach you this. We didn't prepare like that, but I guess it was God putting the whole thing together. Have you ever wondered what matters to God? That anybody is interested to know what matters to God? I'm asking you. Because some of us, we literally giving our lives. And, okay, have you ever wondered what matters to God? The Bible tells us in Galatians 5, 6, it says this. If you are a follower of Jesus Christ, all that matters is your faith that makes you love others. I'm going to say it again. All that matters is that your faith makes you love others. You hear me? God says what matters in life is not your accomplishment or your achievements on your, or your fame or your wealth. The other thing that matters is having a faith that causes you and me to love other people. If you miss that, stay with me, you have missed the most important thing in life. Today we're going to look at the most famous chapter in the Bible on love. Why? Is February? No. But Easter is coming. And I need to prepare you when I said to you for the next weeks, this is what we're going to do to get your loved ones here. This is what we're going to do. This is why we're going to push extra hours. This is why we're going to get to the streets to pass flyers. This is why we're going to start connect groups. This is why we're going to have a connection group team now. Why? Because of this. We're tired. Now you're going to push more? Yes. Because we got to stay focused with the cause. Why we do what we do. Can you say amen? 1 Corinthians 13 is a tremendous, tremendous chapter in the Bible that expressed the love of God. Now, when speakers want to get your attention and want you to remember something, they use what is called repetition. They say something over and over in the first few verses of this passage. Paul, the speaker Paul, Apostle Paul, practiced the repetition. And he gave us five different ways of well, the most important thing in life is love. Five things that will represent the most important thing. Would you like to know them? Let's go and drink coffee, you and me. Would you like to know them? I want the people in the chips over there to also, hey, my people, what's up? How you? Would you like to know them? All right, here we go. I love you people. Number one, if you don't live a life of love, I'm going to say it again. If you don't live a life of love, then nothing you say will matter. Okay, stay with me. Stay with me. If you don't live a life of love, nothing will you say, it will matter. If I could speak, look at what it says. 1 Corinthians 31. If I could speak all the languages of the earth and of angels, but didn't love others, I will only be a noisy gang or a clanging symbol. A noisy gang or a clanging symbol. Something like that. Are you with me? I would just be making noise, not communicating. What? Some of you are living like that. You need to understand this. We are really impressed by great speakers, my friends. We are really impressed. We love eloquence and charisma. But God says, I don't care how good a communicator you are. If you're living a life of love, if you're not, then nothing you say will matter. Words without love are just noise. You hear me what I said? When somebody says, oh, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, it looks good. It sounds good, but they never do it. They're just making what? Noise. Have you ever found some Christians that they just make noise as they're trying to communicate the love? Religious people, it's like this. 
you need to understand. Words without love mean nothing. You got it? Number two, if you don't live a life of love, nothing you know will matter. Nothing you know will matter. Look at what it says, verse 2. I may have the gift of prophecy. Ooh, prophecy. Am I, I may understand all the secret things of God and I have all knowledge. But even all these things, if I do not have love, then I am nothing. We live in a world, stay with me please, where knowledge is exploding. And now more than ever, we are smarter than we have ever been. Are you with me? And it's not really that people spend hours and hours in school. It's that information is very accessible. City, can you tell me what's the capital of Chingonjong And City says, is one, 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 one. Are you with me? I mean, how in the world you will have that 20 years ago? No way. Now, okay, please stay with me. Because some of you are more interested in knowledge, and you think that your knowledge will impact the nations. I'm here to tell you, it's good to have knowledge, but if you got no love, everybody's going to feel that. You can be the wiser man in the room, but that doesn't mean that you are the most efficient person to communicate the kingdom of God. Because Jesus made it very clear, and Paul got it. It's not only about having wisdom. It's about communicating love. Communicating what? Love. We still have the same problems nowadays. So many problems. Crime, abuse, prejudice, violence. Why? Because the world doesn't need more knowledge. It needs more love. You hear me? You may be a genius. But God says if you don't have love in your life, all that you know is worthless. Have you ever been next to somebody that is very proud about their knowledge? No? Have you ever been talked to somebody? Maybe in my circle size sometimes I'm in the airplanes or I'm talking in some meetings and somebody comes with so much eloquence and blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, I can wait this man to stop and get out of the place. He's so, I'm going to just move around, you know what? Because that means nothing. When we minister to children, if you come and say, hey, I want to let you know that, uh, shut up. Just hug them. Come and know what I'm talking about. Your love, please stay with me, will communicate stronger than your words. Ooh, I lost you right there. Your love will communicate stronger than your words. And that you can apply too, mama, papa. Uncle, somebody out there. Number three, if you don't live a life of love, nothing you believe will matter. Look at what it says to be. The Bible says, even if I have the gift of faith so that I, have, that I could speak to a mountain and make it move, I would still be worth nothing all, at all without love. There is a myth that being a father of Christ it's just a matter of believing certain truths. Nothing can be farther from the truth, my friends. You hear what I just say? Following Christ is about living a life of love, my friends. I'm going to repeat that because I'm losing you right now. Following Christ is about living a life of love. It takes more than believe to please God. A lot of people have a strong beliefs. have a strong beliefs but you never show love people can see that you're not a person that express love it doesn't matter whatever you believe well I believe I believe listen if your beliefs are not reflected in love it means nothing you can memorize stay with me this Bible from one part to the other part but if you don't operate in love, you are just religious. Please, why that I'm saying this? It's so basic. 
But this is what the problem is. We have confused the whole thing lately. We think that it's all about what we know. We think that it's all about uh, knowledge. It's all about what I believe. It's about how you love. It's about how you love. For if you don't live a life of love, nothing you give will matter. Oh, now I'm going to take it deeper. Listen, nothing you give will matter if you're not doing it in love. The next verse says, if I gave everything I have to the poor and even sacrificed my body, I could boast about it. But if I didn't love others, I would have gained nothing. In other words, some people literally are apparently in those days when Paul was alive, not only given their, their finances, but even their body for other people. Kind of. Are you with me? And Paul is saying it means nothing if you're not doing it with love. Love isn't always the motivation of giving. Wake up. Not everybody gives because they love. How many of you remember when you were immature? You gave because you want other people to see you. You didn't want to be embarrassed that you were not giving. Come on, be honest. Yes or no? Am I the only one that went through that stage in my life? Some people give just to get back. I remember. Well, I got it. Apparently, the revelation, the more I give, the more God is going to give me back. So then I was treating giving to God like a bank. I'm going to give more and more because God is going to give me more and more. Then my motivation was not love. My motivation was banking my cash. Yes, God is going to multiply everything, but if my motivation is wrong, it's not love. Then what I'm giving means nothing. Oops. For all of you that give and you don't give it with love. So you're saying that everything I've been giving to this place, that's right. That's why you don't see the benefit, the multiplication, the blessings. Not only financially, but in your home, in your work, in every area of your life. Because God promised to bless you in every area. I want that every person in this place, look at me, wake up with this conviction. I'm so blessed that I can stand. Every morning when I wake up, this is my phrase. God, I'm so blessed that I can stand. This is what I love the song. So blessed, I can contain it. So much, I can give it up. Come on, people. This is old school song. Remember the song? So blessed. I am so blessed. I'm overwhelmed. That's exactly what Quran was saying right here. I'm so blessed. When I start to count the blessings, I'm overwhelmed. Listen, God from this day until the day I die can give me nothing. And he already gave me more than what I deserve. I hope you understand what I just say right now. I'm overwhelmed. Is the love of God. And that's why everything that I do, I want to make sure that I do because I love. Because you what? Why did you came here today? Well, I came here. I'm going to be honest. I remember when I was a baby Christian, actually not a follower. I came to the church of my mama because mama say clear. You want the car? You come to church with me. I, I, I was going because I wanted the car. Then I was a baby Christian. I was not there because of Jesus. I was there because of my sisters. You're like, oh, Jesus. I was young. What are talking about? I was like praising God and I was like, God, is that the person you're going to provide for me? Is that my rib? Is that my rib, Lord? I wasn't sure for so many different reasons, but not for the right reason. It took time for me to understand in my giving. So if you give everything, but you got no love, you got nothing. Turn to the person next to you and say, you, you better got some love. And then turn to the other person and say, I love you. No, okay, okay. <laughs> Please don't do it. Don't do it. 
Don't do it. Some cultures, don't touch me. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Stay away from me. Don't touch me. Just love you guys. You can give a lot with the wrong motivation. The Bible says, if you're not doing it in love, none of your giving counts. And number five, life. Okay, I'm going to repeat all of them because some of you need to hear this. If you don't live a life of love, then nothing you say will matter. Have you ever feel like you're saying and you're saying and they're not getting it? Say yes or no? They cannot really love through your words. I'm trying to help you. Why this side of this area don't change? Because you are saying and, and, and you're not getting it. You're just saying things without the right love. People know if I love them. People know. He calls me every week. Yes, you, Miguel. I could have choose to say, I'm busy. Ooh, Miguel. Did I pick up the phone, Miguel? Did I pick up the phone today in the morning? Yes. Yes. Because it means nothing for me to stand up here and try to convince if I don't convince the people that I love them when I'm down there. It's love. How have you been able to stay in this faith? You know what motivates Simone? These ladies in the front, they've been here 20 years. This gentleman. It motivates love. Pastors in the back. It's love. It's love. People here, my right hand son, my assistant, been with me for almost 20 years. It's love. Leaders in this church, they love. Amen? So, if you don't live a life of love, nothing you know will matter. Oh, I know so much. Yes, you know so much. And God is giving it to you so you can communicate because people need to know what you know. But if you don't show it in love, it means nothing. It means absolutely nothing. And if you don't live a life of love, nothing you believe will matter. Nothing. How many of you understand that you and me, we have the strongest belief that can change the world? <laughs> yes or no? What you and me, we got has changed nations. Our beliefs has changed, my friends, generations. But it's in love that must communicate. And nothing you give with a love will matter. And last, you know why? Because life is about relationships, not accomplishments. <laughs> if you're going to hand clap to God, you better do it now. Make it loud so he can hear it. And the people out there that are, come on, come on. This is what it's all about. Life is about relationships, not accomplishments. Galatians 5, 6. If you're a father of Jesus Christ, all that matters is your faith making you love others. If you don't live a life of love, then nothing you say matters. Nothing you know will matter. Nothing you believe. Nothing you give. Nothing will matter. Finally, if you don't live a life of love, nothing will matter. You accomplish will be important. The Bible says, 13.3, no matter what I say, what I believe, what I do, I am bankrupt without love. You understand? I am bankrupt without love. You can rack up an incredible list of personal achievement. You can get your picture on the cover of Time magazine. You can. You can win the Nobel Prize. You can have enormous accomplishments. Be the man of the year. Build a billion dollar company. Have incredible, great success. But the Bible says, look what the Bible says. Relationships are more important than accomplishments. Man, I lost you right there. Relationships are more important than accomplishments. 
This world sells you accomplishments are more important. But the Bible says, make treasures in the heavens. It doesn't say be a lazy bum. No, no, no. But it says, what is the priority? Relationships. Where do you get that? It's the whole Bible. It's not the Bible saying love your God with all your heart and then love your neighbor as yourself. And with that, you will complete the whole law. It's saying, listen, love God, love people. How confusing is that? It's not confusing. Love God, love what? People. I'm going to say it again. Let's say it loud. Love God, love people. I'm about to finish. Say, love God, love people. That's it. That's what I'm saying. That's the echo of the church. We always got echo in the church. We got to love God and we got to love people. Because if you're saying, I love God, but you don't love people, and then how can we evaluate your love? It's like James says, we are saved by faith, but if I have no works according to my faith, then my faith is completely dead. You hear me? Saved by grace, but once we grace, we must have works that represent what we got. Relationships, my friend. It's very important. Life is about relationships, my friends. It is simple as this. You can have the eloquence of a speaker, the knowledge of a genius, the faith miracle worker, the generosity of Mother Teresa, literally. Or the achievements of a superstar. But if you don't have love in your heart, listen, you were zero. You mean nothing in this earth. Because when you're gone, when you're gone, nobody will remember you. The impact you're going to left behind is some people. Not in buildings. Not in companies. It's in people. The only thing that matters to God is this. Did you love him? Yes. Then love the people. Did you love him? Answer me. I'm about to finish now. We got good time. Did you love him? Love the people. One day you're going to stand in front of God. And he's not going to say, how many companies you build? He's not going to say, how's your well down there in the earth? He's going to say, how do you love with the love that I gave you? How many people was influenced with the love that I gave you? Easter Sunday is coming. You just heard a tremendous practical object lesson of what I've been trying to say. Why do you, what in the world you think moves a man like Pastor Bill? He has abandoned himself for the cause. His love. Because once you are next to a little girl or a little boy in the complete darkness place, a dark place, it does something in you that you never are the same. We all have some of those experiences. Whatever in the Philippines and another country, or walking in the streets of New York City. Or maybe even in church. Without love, we got nothing, my friends. You can have all the trophies. How many of you, when you were young, I come from a generation, and I'm getting done the whole thing with this, but I come from a generation that they used to give a lot of trophies when you were growing up. I don't know what I'm talking about. Like, and then I was involved in sports and school, you know, and theater. So, my friends, I, I developed a whole collection of trophies. And then it was not only that, but they used to give trophies for participation. Not only for first and second, third place, but, you know, the medals were going on. I remember I was in gymnast, and they would give us the first gold, and then silver, and then the other one, the bronze. But and then plastic, 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 plastic for all the people that participate. And, and you collect all these trophies. And then you feel, have you ever felt like passing by to your trophy, next to your trophies, and like, yeah, I'm that person. And then mama, of course, she's going to put all the trophies wherever everybody can see them. How many know what I'm talking about, right? You are dropping the trophies as you walk in the place. But they're all over the place, the trophies. Well, guess what? 
They were the pride of the family. We never, when then we move out of that house, and nobody was living in the house where we used to live as a family. They came and robbed. Guess what they robbed? The trophies. So, one day, I was a Christian. Stay with me. And I, they say, I was a baby Christian. They say, give your testimony. So, guess what I did? I brought my trophies, my medals, and, oh, and I throw that to the side to serve Jesus. And people, ah. But in the very instant, like, I'm the man. Look, 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 look. I did all this. Right? There was some pride in my testimony. I'm going somewhere with this. When they stole nothing but the trophies and the medals in the house, God spoke to me. You know what he said? Would you like to know? You don't want to know. Would you like to know? You know what he said to me? You have no past. Your past is an obstacle for you to do what I want to do in your future. Prove now that you were the man in gymnastics? I can. In the past, I will grab the medals and what? Show it. Now I can. God said, I allow them to take that because you are prideful in your past. And what it has to do with this? You can be serving God and still not do it with the right motivation. The motivation must be love. The motivation must be love. God is going to evaluate us, not because of our accomplishments, not because of the many trophies. The great commandment was love your God with all your heart and love your neighbor. If you are a follower of Christ Jesus, all that matters is your faith. I'm sorry, all that matters is that your faith makes you, makes you love others. Amen. I want you.